You might want to stop rolling your fat doobies around, ladies and gentlemen, because in the last video, we covered the latest drama surrounding, like, PlayStation. So PlayStation made another boo-boo, guys. Yeah, apparently, if you thought the Helldivers 2 situation was over, it's not! And we also got a lot of people mad, understandably and rightfully so. We covered this part in the last video as well, where, li I mean, like the video if you like Lara Croft original design, dislike the video if you like Lorenzo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so that's happening, <laughs> that's happening as well, and now suckers are going crazy. Both PlayStation and Xbox are clapping and pounding gamers right now. Man says Xbox is dead, get ready for the climax. And apparently what we're hearing here is that IGN spoke with two Xbox employees about the situation. They think it was most likely a board decision rather than Phil Spencer's, but Phil Spencer needs to fix it, talking about like fixing Xbox, right? Before Xbox will lose its soul. And I quote, it's no longer Xbox, but Microsoft Gaming. Yay! So that's kind of like the story right now. And an update on the story, Culture, Crave actually responded, uh, they made like the update. This is via Kotaku, so it doesn't help the case, but like, apparently, uh, um, gamers are nuking, uh, uh, nuking Phil Spencer Fallout 76 camp in the game. And now we're figuring out the guy who nuked, Phil Spencer in Fallout 76 says that it has been his mission for me <laughs> for weeks and I quote he was the final boss in my eyes saying that Phil Spencer was the final boss truly Bruh. wild in an RPG I prefer to be the bad guy and another guy responded by saying he says he's the bad guy but in reality carefully he's a hero <laughs> I, I cannot compute it. My EXE broke, but wait for this one. Roll What's it. up, gamers? Dreamcast guy here. And today we're talking about the death of Xbox because it has been an Today we're talking, I mean, we have been talking about for like, how many days at this point? Absolute bloodbath for the brand the last 72 hours. Even the most hardcore Xbox aficionados, the people that completely love the brand and yeah. cheerlead Game Pass, at yeah. this point have totally given up. The studios they buy are the studios they close. And even <laughs> if you did actually enjoy Xbox like five years ago, you have to look at the painting on the wall. Oh, they're not coming no. out with new games, they're not even trying to hype up their own projects with trailers. Oh, at this point, Points, no, Xbox no. has given up, and today specifically, I want to take a look at a huge insider article that was just put up over ow, on IGN ow, ow. talking to tons of sources inside of Bethesda and Microsoft yeah. and Xbox and talk about how this imploded and how Ooh. a lot of it is Phil Spencer's fault. Holy. Let's get into it. Hi, I hope you're having a great day. If you could, please give this video a like and subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe, guys. Otherwise, Lorenzo will come and whoop your ass, bruh. If you haven't already. Now, before okay. anything else, we need to talk about where this came from and why we know that it's actually legit. So it was written by Ryan McCaffrey. I have in the past been kind of hard here and there to yeah. Ryan McCaffrey because he is very much an Xbox simp. He has been running an Xbox podcast for over a decade. He is a guy who is a professional fanboy. But I mean, honestly, it's just part of his job. I don't think this guy is going home and kissing a picture of Phil Spencer that he keeps in his wallet. I think as a guy who is paid to cheerlead Xbox. Xbox and he does that job dutifully, but even he has realized that it's over. The party, the renaissance, the heyday of Xbox has long since passed. Oh, now what's no. crazy is that not only does he roast it, not only does he cite some very unique sources, but if you look at the replies, people are sort of agreeing and proving it's legit. Like this is Larry. Larry? Larry? Is that you? Larry? Oh no, that's Lorenzo, my bad guess. My yeah. bad. That's Lorenzo, not Larry. Larry. Okay. Herb. My bad. This is the guy who worked at Xbox for 20 years. And even and? he is just sort of being like, yeah, <gasps> you're kind of dropping hot fire here. Look at this. Everybody's being like, wow. You can actually see uh, Seamus Blackley. This is the inventor of the Xbox. Even he, uh, he's called the father of Xbox. Even he is talking about the fact that there are these quotes That's that wild. Xbox is dead. And now it's just Microsoft, Microsoft gaming. gaming. Okay, so if you have Xbox right now, right? Or or not. Uh, if you're just a gamer, right? You don't care for Sony Ponies uh, crap. Uh, you don't care for Xbox Andy's crap. Uh, I mean, banter is fine. Like, memes are fine. Like, we need those uh, memes sometimes to make it a little bit lighthearted, you know? Uh, but, but, like, generally speaking, uh, I, I want, like, this level-headed take, okay, from all of you, right? 
how do you feel about this one do you think this situation is blown out overblown do you think it's kind of understandable because like phil spencer has been saying hey gaming games are coming games are coming stay patient guys stay patient he says that every single year at this point that that's like objectively true that's not even uh like uh sarcasm right gaming gaming for everybody and recently they 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 did they done an interview with sarah bond bloomberg did an interview with her asking her about hey like uh so why did you guys shut down tangle uh who made high fire rush and you guys said high fire rush was a success fans are upset with it we covered that as well on the channel right and she responded in a way where it was just like completely baffling everybody was after everybody was, was baffled because she did not answer the question she is the president of xbox but didn't answer didn't answer the question and a lot of people are like hey bro like where's mad booty at where's phil spencer right it, it feels like that uh mad booty and phil spencer uh, has like put her on blast and just told her hey now it's your turn to take the heat because we have took heat for like years and years Bruh. because phil spencer has been on apology tours like with, with redfall uh not long ago right now in the recent memory he has been going on apology tour every time like some drama happens apology tour uh, and uh, with, with, uh, of course we have the rumor that all the games are gonna be coming all the xbox games are gonna be coming on playstation phil spencer went on an apology tour as well <laughs> yeah and, and he calmed down everybody and said that it's it's just gonna be four games it's just gonna be four games so there was a ton of drama then uh and, and now now it's like yeah nobody knows where he's at and uh, this is why i think gamers in their words toxic toxic gamers uh gamers are now like nuking phil spencer camp just completely insane bro insanity. let's actually go through it let's actually take a look at this because okay. i've read the whole thing twice and i must admit i am shocked at how bleak the entire dumpster fire billion dollar mess this has evolved into phil spencer and the battle for xbox's soul once a scrappy startup with a buttoned-up institution, Xbox and its longtime leader are now struggling to resist buckling under the weight of being the very thing they once stood <laughs> against. Now, I will admit... Why y'all gonna sound this dramatic, bro? Oh, no. I mean, it's kind of dramatic um, for them to kind of, like, shut down the studio. The same day, Mad Booty comes out and says that, yeah, we need more smaller games, and Hi-Fi Rush is a success. Aaron Greenberg, who likes to always do, like, this X sign, also did say, yeah, apparently you're you're seeing that tweet right now. Hi-Fi Rush, wait for that. This is part of why I feel like Xbox fanboys in the past, I kind of understood it. They definitely had that underdog vibe of, like, oh, yeah, okay, so Sony is selling 80 billion consoles. They're creating huge AAAs, but if you really want to cheer for the underdog, you root for Xbox. They can't compete with Nintendo's brand loyalty. They can't make games as big and beautiful as Sony, but the vibe of Xbox, it's definitely something that stands out. But look at this. For the umpteenth time in the past decade, Xbox has once again stepped on a rake. Microsoft oh, has no. found itself on the wrong end of bad news. <laughs> and as usual, it's self-inflicted. Just as Team Green was starting to gather some positive momentum, yeah. with the Fallout TV show being the biggest thing ever, Fallout games being among the top games in the world being played, and now Sinua Saga coming out here in just a couple weeks, it seems like everything would be good, especially going into yeah. the showcase on June oh, 9th, man. and yet now it's all managed to fall apart because they're closing three very beloved studios. Tango yeah. Gameworks, Arcane Austin, and Alpha Dog, which uh, obviously people are talking less about Alpha Dog, but they yeah. are a... M m more, uh, most people are upset with the fact that Tango Gameworks were shut down, and, and people uh, everywhere, gamers across the board are saying, people that haven't even played Hi-Fi Rush are on the same page, because it's not necessarily about the fact that Hi-Fi Rush is good or bad, it's the fact that you guys said that it's a success, and in the same day, <clears throat> when they when we apparently heard they got shut down, they also said we need more smaller games. And High Fire Rush is successful for us. And, and we find out that they were making High Fire Rush 2. And they, they, they shut them down! They shut them down! That make it make sense! That don't even make sense! So they shut them down because they were working on High Fire Rush 2. And you need more smaller games like High Fire Rush. And High Fire Rush was apparently a success, but you're still gonna shut them down? Like, man, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Sort of a mobile branch. They made a mobile version of Doom that some of my friends that were playing said it was actually good, so it being shuttered is bizarre. But look at this. Fans were quick to point out how now hypocritical many quotes from Xbox executives such as studio marketing boss Aaron Greenberg have been. Like, look at this. Last year, literally one year ago, he said, oh yeah, Hi-Fi Rush has been a gigantic success by every single key metric. It's getting played a bunch. It's getting crazy reviews. It's exactly what Xbox wanted. And yet they decided to shut it down anyways. Look at that. We could not be happier with Tango. 
then why did you close them? Yeah. In 2021 documentary called Power On, Sarah Bond, which is the president of Xbox, oh, no. said they were trying to avoid closing studios. Power On was this documentary kind of about the history of Xbox, and they said that a specific goal they were looking to not repeat is buying yeah. a studio, in that case, yeah. obviously the fabled developer Lionhead, and then once they got it... Uh, sorry guys, I got one more in me! Or more like... You, you ever seen that meme, right? Like, sick as always drop it on Twitter, in the on the Twitter streets, like... Uh, I got one more in me. Nah, cancel that. Scratch that. I got a lot more in me. <laughs> you what? Holy crap, what is going on? And Fable Dev, I, oh man, oh no. So we got uh, Lorenzo. Uh, what, what's the name of this Fable character? I don't know, man. Uh, you guys can definitely come up with some creative right now. Because Lorenzo looking kind of, kind of, uh, you guys think that Lorenzo can beat that Fable, Fable dude or nah? Your name, what, what are we thinking? One, if you think it can beat, and right as we get down to the climax here, folks, real quick, I want to say I got a second channel. This is where we upload UFO content, conspiracy content every single day, okay? The link would be in the top and comment below where you can uh, catch up on all my second channels, even my third channel. Bruh. Yay, third channel, guys. <laughs> third channel. Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and also a secret link here. All right, let's get back to the content now, Boo Boo. So definitely check it out, guys. They, they ended up forcing them to make a multiplayer game, a multiplayer freaking fable, which was terrible, and it Wait ended up it. completely shutting down the studio. And they were like, okay, we need to stop doing that. And one year yeah. ago, in the wake yeah. of Redfall's disastrous launch, Phil Spencer directly said the words, one thing I don't want to do is push against the creative aspirations of our teams. When a team like Rare wants to do Sea of Thieves, or a team like Obsidian wants to do Grounded, when Tango wants to do Hi-Fi Rush, look at this, when everyone is doing things, they could have done Evil Within 3, but I want to give teams the creative platform to push their ability and push their aspirations. Now, But like, how are they gonna like push uh, for their aspirations and their ability? Then you're gonna snatch the platform away though, right? You want to give the teams a creative platform, but it's like, you shut them down right after, Phil. That's not the way to give them creative platform, my G. Like, you wanna, yeah, I, I get it. You wanna give the creative platform, but like, Sega's wanna be working. If you shut the studio down, they're not gonna have the creative platform, my guy, like. Here's my favorite line of this entire uh -oh. article. It's why I reread uh -oh. it twice. At best, these once reassuring quotes bring hollow. At worst, they're outright lies. A lot of the interestingness that's been happening, especially over the course of the last 48 hours, is people asking, are these people lying? Is Phil Spencer actually coming out here and saying things that he knows isn't true? I mean, I even put out a, a video last night talking about the fact that Sarah Bond pretty much refuses to talk about it. She was directly yeah. asked about the closure of Tango, oh, she and does, she was just like, though. oh, there's a lot of subjective metrics. What does that even mean? Like right here, is Aaron Greenberg lying when he said that they could not be happier with Tango? Was he lying that the game performed well? Now, I don't want to defend Aaron uh, or Phil because I really don't know who made this call, but I feel like that a bunch of things, right? Number one, I, I think that Hi-Fi Rush definitely was a success. Oh, absolutely. People that played, they, they liked it. It was a niche game, absolutely. So it didn't cater to everybody, but that's perfectly fine. Sometimes you need smaller games. And in the words of Xbox, they, they needed smaller games they needed but I, I feel like that maybe in the beginning it did very very well but later on it did not so it lost players and momentum which is normal that's understandable that like that happens to majority of the games there are only few games like uh fortnite call of duty right uh multiplayer games for example hell divers uh, as well that would get a lot of people playing the game day one slowly yeah it would decline absolutely but still it would uh, keep seeing substantial amount of people and then they would make a lot of revenue through microtransactions and people playing the game That happens to very few games generally speaking. I can bring in some uh, PlayStation exclusives for example spider-man 2 God of War right good games uh, uh, and, and good story games single-player games But guess what it's single-player games So Sega's gonna play it once and peace out and some of them are probably gonna choose to play it for the second time third time But majority the normies just gonna play it once and then dip right and they would probably replay the game like a year later two years later five years later kind of like hey i, I wanna i'm feeling kind of nostalgic i want to go back and just 
play the game, right? Understandable, majority of, most games, majority of the games, they would see a spike and then just lose all the momentum and players, and I feel like that high fire rush must have seen that, of course, I I'm assuming that first of all, so not a fact, uh, I, I don't know, but I'm assuming that, so they were like, okay, it was successful, but now it's not making us the money, so let's shut them down, like, like, that don't even make sense, bro, like, given, and Suckers wanted to make high fire rush too, what are we doing here? Of course, like, not every game is gonna, like, keep the, the same level, uh, same amount of people uh, or playing your game, bruh. Like, it don't work like that. Or is he lying that Tango is actually up to snuff? Like, it, some part of this is definitely a lie. It, it's hard to tell which- Yeah, yeah, or, and also I feel like that uh, maybe it was not Eren and Phil's call. They perhaps wanted, uh, I, I don't know, like, maybe they were also like, hey, uh, we want this studio to shut down, but I, I, I feel like that they did not want these uh, studios to be shut down. The, the higher-ups made the call because they were losing money, or they didn't see profit uh, from them in the future, perhaps, maybe that's why, but it's like... It's one of those things, and I'm seeing like a lot of people make make this comparison on Twitter as well. On, on uh, not specifically this, I, I don't have that opened up, but I saw online, I saw it on Twitter, uh, where guys were comparing, hey, Uncharted One, right? Uncharted One, they were comparing to Hi-Fi Rush, not in in a way where both are same games because they're not different genres altogether. But they were saying people love Hi-Fi Rush, people love Uncharted, and Uncharted One uh, was kind of like you know not like a crazy game right it, it was like people liked it when it came up but you know not that much but sony was like hey naughty dog you gotta make part two and guess what to uh, to this day uncharted 2 is considered to be the best uncharted game of all time hand on top of this bottle of water i played all the uncharted games and even for for me uncharted 2 is like very very good graphically speaking even to this day very good story wise amazing gameplay wise very very good uh, uh, uh yeah like uncharted 1 2 3 and 4 out of all of the Uncharted games, Uncharted 2 is considered to be good. So people are generally just making comparison, although these are different niches, different niches games, uh, different niche games. But people are making the comparison, like look at look like if Sony were to stop Uncharted, Uncharted wouldn't be would have wouldn't have been what it is today, right? So they gave them a chance and they were like, okay, go ahead and make Uncharted 2. Why not give Tango game a chance and let them make High Fire Rush 2 because now they, they got the feedback, they made the game and this time they're gonna make it even better, but they're like, okay, let's shut them down, so. Which part is a lie, but they're literally lying. Look at this, we've come a long way from Xbox fans proudly cheer cheering, I trust Phil. People used to post these. Oh, I want to show you this meme because honestly, it's Bum so cringe. I believe in Phil Spencer. Why were you guys even making like <laughs> fake political posters for these game developers? Somebody actually tweeted me yesterday oh and they said, uh, you know, Max doesn't burn against Nintendo enough. People, he doesn't roast PlayStation enough when honestly, anybody who's been watching me for a long time knows I absolutely do. I've done multiple viral videos, especially roasting uh, Nintendo for stuff like their old uh, Nintendo Switch online headset and stuff. My point is the fact that my rule has always been that these companies are not your friends. They're not yeah. your buddies. They're not your pals. They're not your schoolyard buddy trying to make some cool project. These are companies. And I think it is okay to buy into hype. I mean, life is short. If you want to get excited, if you want to get yourself really amped about a project, even if it is just a CGI trailer with no gameplay in it, I'm not going to tell someone, don't be excited. Because, you know what? Do whatever makes you happy. It, I, it's gaming at the end of the day. So basically, like, take it like, don't take it literally, literally. But you also don't want to be sucking, like, Phil Spencer, BBC, or Jim Ryan, BBC, or BWC, or LBC, rather. Like, what am I even bruh. saying? Right, L L yeah, LWC for Phil and LWC for... <laughs> For Jim Ryan, yeah, like, uh, Sigis be taking, like, uh, crap, literally, though. On that, I would say that's a rare uh, Dreamcast guy W take uh, on this part. Yeah, that's what I preach as well. Like, these uh, companies, and, and companies ha absolutely have the right to make the money and right to make good products or bad products, but customers also have the right to buy or not buy, and the customers and gamers has the right to criticize it. If you don't like it, yeah, absolutely, you have the right. But they don't want you criticizing. They don't want you asking questions. Customer has the I believe it that customers have the right to absolutely ask questions. Like the video if you agree, dislike if you disagree. 
think, though, that people go this step further and they want to defend brands. Not just defending people, they want to defend these brands like they're yeah. their friends. And in my opinion, not, not only is that not. counterproductive, I, I think it is, n just generally, I think it's bad for the industry. I think we should, if you love something, you should be more willing to roast it. Xbox fans, I will fully say, I respect the fact that Xbox fans are first in line to roast Xbox when they mess up. And I think that's that's been a really interesting turn of events for this last 40 years. Yeah, general, generally speaking, right, like we have, we've seen like a week ago with PlayStation and Helldivers 2 situation, and that situation is not stopping. Sony is doing round two right now. Oh, shit. I, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll link to that video in just a little bit as well. You will see what happened. Yeah, I made a follow-up video on this one uh, because they reversed the changes, but they kind of re-re-reverse the changes again. <laughs> and, and PlayStation players, uh, also Xbox players, literally uh, uh, everybody came together and, you know, we made Sony bend the knee, but Sony be still on their old antics and shenanigans. And, and now, like, Xbox fans, PlayStation fans, everybody, everybody is also talking about this crap that Xbox is doing. So I, I feel like that now, surely we have Sony ponies, we got PlayStation fanboys, we got Xbox Andy's Xbox fanboys, absolutely. To some degree, banter is fine, and we need that. I mean, after all, we need some jokes, we need uh, we need some memes as well. Who's gonna make the memes, right? Who's gonna make the memes if we don't have Sony ponies and Xbox Andy? So I'm absolutely for it, as long as it's not like, uh, you know, getting to the, the, the toxic cesspool where, you know what, you're so blinded by the fact that that Phil Spencer cared for you or Jim Ryan cared for you. It's like it just retired. Jim Ryan actually retired, so he peaced out, right? you know? Uh, but, but you understand what, uh, what I'm saying, right? You get the point, right? Like, these companies don't care about you. So if you're gonna be taking that literally, I mean, come on, dog, what are we doing here? But I feel like that a lot of people are now, a lot of gamers are coming together, and it's uh, quite rare, quite rare to see hours but look at this uh bloomberg last night also reported that microsoft is not done making cuts they're going to be firing uh -oh. a bunch more people uh -oh. but here's the part i specifically wanted to highlight in this which is where i spoke to two former longtime employees separately oh, no. and both lamented oh, the current state of the business now when uh, a website like kotaku or ign or gamespot or bloomberg in uh, the previous case actually posts quotes like this you have to believe them because of how their sourcing works. These guys have access to stuff that general YouTubers don't have. I have a chance to talk secretly. I've had some like cool secret meetings with people, but a lot of times it's stuff that's very off the record. I have heard all sorts of crazy off the record stuff, even from people inside of Microsoft, but I can't report on it because a lot of times it's stuff that's difficult to verify. I, I can't tell if it's just a drunk guy, you know, saying things he shouldn't say. A couple years ago, I leaked some stuff about Fallout 76 because I did actually just run into Fallout 76 developers at a, uh, like, video game bar, and they uh, were just talking about how they didn't really yeah. care if people like... Uh, did they actually uh, talk about nuking versus that? Did they actually uh, talk about nuking Phil Spencer camp in the future, or no? At Fallout 76, because they were going to get paid, and it was a live service game, and as yeah. long as people were logging in, screw the game. But stuff like that. This quote is interesting to me, because I think it really shows how bleak the situation is that these people are willing to talk on the record to have these quotes actually used. One told okay. me, prior to this week's awful studio closures, I had a I lengthy conversation with a bunch of Xbox founders, and we all came to the same conclusion. It is no longer Xbox, but Microsoft Gaming. <gasps> now, Oh my god, bro. Nah, say you swear to god, bro. I mean, kind of like, the writing has been on the wall. It's not even a shocker at this point. Yeah, they're trying to get rid of the Xbox kind of uh, branding, essentially. I, 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 I don't know if like Phil Spencer is gonna respond this time or not because usually he does he takes a little bit of time of course uh, understandable understandable he's probably gonna like meet up with all the psychologists and they probably got all the psychologists <laughs> they, I mean Sony has it all of these corporation has it so Microsoft certainly have them too they're probably like in meetings talking about how we can uh, best approach the situation and damage control it the but I don't know if he's really gonna do it this time because Phil Spencer always go on apology tours and he does it every time some bad happens. And this time I'm seeing a lot more people talk about it. So it feels like that he's gonna, but I don't know, is he really gonna do or not? Now, some people would say, why is that necessarily a bad thing? How is it that you can like Microsoft games, but you don't like Microsoft? I think it comes down to the fact that Microsoft is not a video game company. They are a software company. They yeah. sell you... But, but to me, uh, and I feel like... I, okay, I, 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 of course, I cannot talk on behalf of like, Xbox fans and uh, gen, uh, for any of you out there watching, but for me, even if they change the wording from Xbox to Microsoft Gaming, to me, that's not a big deal. The big deal is the fact that them getting rid of Xbox, because that's like a symbol of hey they don't have any hope for 
Xbox, right? The name is not the problem, but the name is still the problem in a way because the reason, the reason behind if they are gonna, not sure if they're really gonna or not, but according to this report, if they really are gonna change the name from Xbox to Microsoft Gaming, that's like a symbol of, hey, they don't believe in Xbox anymore. That's like the real problem, not necessarily the fact that Xbox is changing the name to Microsoft Gaming. For example, if Xbox right now was like killing it, killing it, and then they were to change the name from Xbox to Microsoft Gaming, then it wouldn't be a big deal. So changing the name is not the big deal, but the context here is that Xbox is not doing too good and they're shutting down studios left and right. Fans morale is all time low. Appreciate you subscribing, by the way. Fan morale is all at an all time low and people are seeing the writing on the wall and then we're now figuring out that they're potentially gonna change the name of course uh, people are not feeling it too uh, too good with this one but guys check out this video on the screen this is the one that i was talking about we have a video clip on this one on the left we got this video on the second channel check it out and i'll see you